Hi everybody, this is uh, Thad once again from the uh, Reference and Readers Advisory Department at the Rawlings Library, the Pueblo City County Library District, and today I wanted to do a quick uh, tutorial on the process of ice dye, or ice dyeing, and um, this won't specifically be um, how to tie the item. Um, um, what I have done is this is tied in the uh, the V pattern um, but for our intents and purposes what I'm going to show you today is just how to do the the ice dyeing itself um, it's something I've wanted to um, show in my classes at the library and uh, um, and have everyone have a chance to do it but the just setup isn't great for it but uh, hopefully this tutorial will uh, show you how you can do it at home so um, what I've done is I put my shirt in here and uh, um, it's all tied in the V pattern and what I did was I just kind of wrapped it around itself and then stuck it in this piece of plastic and this piece of plastic is from uh, like one of those clear one gallon kind of tall water jugs kind of the taller slender jugs um, but I, I like these pieces of plastic for ice dyeing just because it keeps everything contained um, I have a bowl of ice here, and then I have some powder dyes here, and they have uh, soda ash in them. So uh, um, this item was not previously soaked in soda ash um, because of that. Um, and then on top of that, I have uh, you know my uh, three-gallon bucket here, and then uh, I use a old um, uh, pie cooling uh, grate um, to set this on top of. Um, and then just a nice little plastic covering on my surface here. Um, so there's two different ways you can do this. You can either put the um, the ice on first or the dye first. Um, I've done it both ways. Uh, both results are cool. Um, I think just a little bit cooler is if you put the ice on first and then uh, sprinkle the dye. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, so switch hands here and just grab some ice and pop it on top here and I do want to cover it completely and use as much of this as I can okay and I think I have that pretty well covered uh, let me just throw a couple more on the whoop, lost one. Let's try another one there. And then maybe one here. And I guess it's let's try a small one there. Okay. And then just one more on top for good measure. And now that there's ice on top there, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add the dye. Um, and when you're doing any tie-dye, whether it's ice dye or liquid dye, you want to think of uh, the color wheel and the colors that are next to each other. So you have your your red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and back to red. And you want to try and keep those kind of, like you want to keep red next to either purple or orange. Or you want blue either next to purple or green. Um, now for this one, I'm going to use uh, purple, red, orange, yellow, and then black. And for the black, I'm going to start with that, and I'm just going to put a line of it on the side here. And usually when I use black on ice dyeing, I'll put it next to purple. Um, so there's the little bit of black, and now I'm going to add some purple. And just get a decent coating there. And a little more. Okay, and then let's go to red. And sorry if I'm kind of going kind of in and out and with the extreme close-ups a little too much. Doing this uh, one-handed. <laughs> um, okay, so there's our red. And back up again. Try not to do the extreme close-up. Uh, here's our orange. And when I do when I do ice dyes, 
Um, I try not to put yellow next to any color except orange. Um, if it's next, even, even though yellow and green are next to each other on the color wheel, um, oftentimes in ice dyeing, they just, it, it gets kind of mucky and brown and just doesn't look good. Um, but anyways, uh, that looks pretty good. I'll probably touch it up a little off camera. But uh, yeah, let's get a aerial view. Alright, and so now what I'm going to let this do is just um, let it sit until the ice is completely melted. Um, just depending on room settings or temperature settings, um, um, you know, it will depend on how long it'll take for that. And then uh, once the ice is all melted and it's dyed, then I'll uh, um, let it sit in a bag. Um, usually after ice dye, um, I'll usually let it sit, you know, bare minimum 24 hours, but, uh, um, you know, if you can do longer, even up to 48, that usually produces the best results. Um, and then, uh, what we'll do is, uh, once this is done, uh, sorry, got a timer there. <laughs> uh, once this is all done in a couple days, uh, we'll do a video to, um, check the final results so you can see what what's happened underneath here anyways thanks for checking this out and we'll we'll uh catch you in part two